Hey guys, welcome to Indie Game Hustle. My name is Charles, and in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the um, the examples so that we can understand better how the blocking works and how it works with defending and the idea of poise and that sort of thing. But before we do that, um, there is one thing I want to do is go back to our um, drawing or not our drawing, but our blocking trigger and set up the controller. Um, I didn't do that in the last video, so I just want to make sure that that has been created. So really quick, um, if you already did it, that's great, um, but I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it has been done. So I'm going to go ahead and do another trigger here, and I'm going to do, um, of course, on key down. And on key down, it's going to be on the, con um, the actual controller. So yes, the actual controller is going to be um, joystick number five here. So um, again, I, I might change this in the, in the later on, but for now, that's the one we're going to set it to. All right, so in terms of the action, of course, we're just going to use the same action that is already being used here. So I'm just going to hit this plus button, and then I'm going to drag this action in here, and that should be good to go. All right, so let's do the same thing for stopping or ending the block. So I'm just going to go ahead and do trigger and I'm going to go ahead and do input and on key up, I believe. Yep. And then we're just going to go ahead and do joystick number five. And of course, hit the plus key, drag this action into here. Great. And of course, as all things, we want to just make sure it's working. So I'm going to hit play and I will go ahead and grab my controller and I will move the camera up. All right, great. So I'm moving around and I'm going to hit the, there we go, joystick active and we are blocking. And we're also going to attack and I can also block if needed. There we go. All right, great. Let's make sure that blocking's working. <laughs> there we go. That's the sound we're looking for. All right, great. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get out of that. All right, so that is working. So, of course, um, if I haven't said it before, I'm saying it now, and sh you should definitely know this anyway, but you definitely should always be saving your work constantly. So make sure you're doing that. All right, so we're able to block now. And so there's some things that we want to understand about blocking that may be super important. So to do that, um, Game Creator has included some awesome um, additional things in terms of uh, examples for their modules. So I'm going to go into my folder for Game Creator and you want to go into plugins, uh, Game Creator and go down to Melee examples. Now, of course, if you have not uh, downloaded this in order to do that, you want to go into the module manager. And in here, when you have the melee module there, you want to select this and then you want to um, add it or update it or whatnot. But um, you should have like an add button there. All right, great. All right, so I'm going to go into melee examples and I'm going to double click on example. All right, great. So this is the example scene that comes with um, game creators uh, melee. And it's pretty handy because it just has all the basics of what you need to understand how um, the melee works. Now, in terms of blocking, what we want to do is take a look at a couple things. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And I just want to show you very quickly, um, basically, the blocking. So, all right. So as you already know, that was drawing, right? And if I hold the button down I can block and have this AI guy coming at us so and as you see I'm holding down the block button and at the very top of the screen you have something called defense and it's going down and the minute that it's completely down I can't block anymore until it builds back up. okay and as you notice when I when I'm not blocking this area here where it says poise that's also reducing that's basically saying you have poise. Basically, you can stand on your two feet until you run out of poise. The minute that you run out of poise, you get pushed completely back. All right. So let's see how that actually works together. So I'm going to go ahead and play and get out of that. So let's take a look at a few things here. So I want to take a look at possibly... 
Okay, so the first thing I want to take a look at is um, what you saw was the UI canvas. And this is interesting. Um, the first thing I want to take a look at this is because you want to probably understand how maybe the UI works. Now, we're going to talk about setting this up later uh, once we decide what UI and what's going to actually be included in this in this platformer. But um, generally speaking, you have defense and you have poise, and um, that's pretty much all that's here. Basically, you have a poise image fill, and that's just a value that is assigned. Um, and this information, however, is coming from two different places. Now, the first one, if I select the player and you go down to where it says character melee, um, you have your delay poise, max poise, and then poise recovery rate. Okay. Um, and so that's going to determine how much your poise is. So let's go ahead and take a look at that really quick. So let's see how that plays out. All right, so right now it's set to max poise of five, and that's what this is. And that recovery rate, when it was kind of building up from zero, basically from black to white all the way, that's this recovery weight there. All right, so the minute I was attack, so that was what, five. So each attack seems like um, one, two, maybe four, it just depends. Maybe each attack, maybe certain attacks reduce certain amounts of poise, and I haven't checked that, but as you can see, that is gonna be based on that. So let's increase this value and see if our poise increases. So I'm gonna do something like 50, and then I'll leave the recovery rate to, I don't know, I'll just leave it at one. And let's see if our max poise is in, like, it's gonna take much longer for this to um, hurt us. Now, as you notice, Poise is taking a bit longer to bit load, and that's because our max has been increased. So that's fine. What we may want, if we want that recovery rate to fill up quicker, then we would just increase that value. Um, but for now, let's just go ahead and let that increase. And it's much more than five, of course. So now let's see. So when he attacks, way more attacks is going to take much more to get us off of our feet right and so that's how you would adjust the poise um, damage or poise attacks on that and so that's pretty nice and this may not be realistic but maybe this is a value that you might want to change later okay now as you can see you can maybe set it to a variable maybe that variable can change over time see and so Maybe there's like an, an upgrade you can do later and you can have that value update um, when you get something so you can increase your poise damage. So maybe at the beginning of the game, it starts at five and then maybe you increase that value as time passes. So that's pretty cool. All right, boom. So now we lose our poise after all of that time. All right, cool. So I'm going to go back to five. All right, great. And so, of course, um, I'll, actually, I'll put it back at 50, and let's increase the recovery rate to be 50 as well. And so that timer, or that, should increase much faster, as you can see. Boom. So it just really quick uh, over time. All right, great. I'll put it back down to 1. Now, so let's take a look at how the defense works. And the defense, I believe, is going to be um, based on the character's shield. So that's what we're all we're talking about here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So that's going to be under, I believe, unsheath. And we're going to select, is it weapon or is it shield? It should be the shield, sword, shield. There it is right there. So that is selected there. Um, so there's the value there. And I did notice something. So I'm going to double check a couple things and I'll get back to you on it. But uh, for now, um, it looks like we have a defense here. So this says 360 and let's take a look there. So I'm going to hit play and I'm gonna go ahead and get to our and let's see here. All right, great. All right, so 
basically what we were looking at is me turning my back to the enemy and I have the value of the defense angle set to 360. Now, if you turn it to something like 120, which I think is the default number, that's gonna be more like a, uh, a viewing angle, right? This is the attack angle in this case, so, or your defense angle, right? So you, from this 120, this is gonna be based on the front of the player, okay? And so that's probably more realistic unless you do want to be able to block from behind, even though you're facing in a different direction. And that's something you can play with in that regard. Now, in terms of the perfect block window, that's going to have something to do with when you execute the block versus when the enemy attacks you. So let's take a look. So as soon as they swing, that right there, that's the perfect block. We do it again. It's a timing thing. So that point two is going to fluctuate um, that ability to, to hit that perfect block. And all of what you just saw there was a perfect block with a counter attack. Now we're not talking about those sorts of things right now. Um, and we may not even utilize that because I focus on the things that we're going to be using for this game. But it is um, something that we can look at in terms of being able to counter an enemy as well. And so that is a perfect block. All right. And so you would change this value in order for that to work for you or against you. It just depends on how you would like that set. So I'll leave it at point two because um, it feels about right. All right. So um, the next thing is the defense recovery rate, and that's going to be similar to the other recovery rate. So right now it's set to 0.5, and so that's how fast the defense is going to refill after it's been reduced. Okay, so if I was to set this to, say, 50, um, that, rec that defense um, is going to almost be instant. Um, so it's pretty quick. Boom. Just like you just saw it just go quick. So if he were to attack me... Let me actually defend. Okay. So as soon as he attacks, it just almost instantly defends. So I would never lose my defense as long as I'm actually holding the button. So there we go. So now every time he attacks, I'm good until, unless his attacks go past that ability, it just continues to lay into it. There you go. So that is pretty much the defense recovery. Okay. So I'm going to put that back at 0.5, but of course you can set that to any value that you're looking for. Now into the max defense, of course, you can assume that this is going to be the max value that our defense is going to be set to. So for now it's set to 10. If we just set it to say 100, then um, for one, it may take a very long time to build up. So if I build this up to say in terms of 50 for the build up, let's see how that looks. All right, so it didn't take that long because we had 50. It didn't feel as quick because the value has been increased. But if we were to go ahead and start blocking, you see how much is being reduced now? Because it's based on 50 as our our our, our value, and that's really hot um, in this regard. So, But if this is a stronger enemy, maybe he can attack and knock that down much stronger. So you can imagine how that would happen. And each weapon and each shield would have its own um, set of, you know, combat abilities and defensive uh, uh, attack power and whatnot. So um, that's just something to think about when you're creating your weapons. So, all right. All right, great. All right, so in terms of that, that's max. So I'm going to go back to 10 and then delaying the defense is basically how long does it take for you to be able to be in a position to defend so the minute that we're attacked in the second that we hit the button to defend how quick does it actually prepare us to be ready so if i were to set this to 100 i'm going to hit play i believe um from my understanding is that if we were to go at this player, and I'm gonna go into my defense mode. 
it's hard for me to get into a defensive because it's taken a long time. That value is at a hundred, and so it's not actually it's it's delaying my defense um, attribute. So let me actually set it to point one, and then I'm gonna do it now. And so I'll show you how that works. So now I think that once I'm in like really close, I can get in. It doesn't take much to be ready to defense. It's much easier. It's much quicker and it's very hard for them to attack because of that. So I can get into a defensive mode much quicker and it's activated better. Now, the only reason he's attacking is because my defense is being reduced. But I am able to get into a defensive mode as long as I have. I won't be caught off guard. It'd be much quicker and easier. So, so yeah, you want to play with that um, particular setting too. And between that and recovery rates and and all of that will make for a pretty good combat. Um, did a really great job with this. And so um, I've never seen anything like this with Game Creator or with any other product um, for Unity. And I think that it makes it easy for you to go ahead and create your attacking and blocking and everything um, in the game. So I hope that that was useful to kind of go over um, how the melee system works in terms of blocking. The so next video, what we're going to do is start to go ahead and implement um, this with our player as well. And then we're going to start thinking about our UI because what we want to do is start reducing not just defense and poise, but we want to look at health. All right, so we're going to start thinking about um, UI. We're going to start looking at menus. We're going to start thinking about the HUD. Um, now that we've kind of started to wrap up most of our mechanics for what our game would have. Okay, all right. So I will see you guys in the next video. Hey, guys, thanks for tuning in. For the next set of videos, I'll be releasing one every day at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. So, to stay up to date on the latest 3D platforming tutorial, feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support, you can find me on Patreon, or, of course, you can hit me up on Discord. I like to talk about whatever project you guys are working on. Of course, thanks for hanging with me. Your support is always appreciated. As always, remember, never give up and keep moving forward. Peace.